What is going on, y'all? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Bison, aka Bison Trades, over on Twitter. And welcome back to another episode of Rare Fub Radio, episode number 35. Going into the holidays, we are on uh, Christmas week. Uh, for those that are selling, uh, celebrating Hanukkah, I think we're in the fourth night, if I remember correctly. But wherever you're celebrating this holiday season, we're happy that you're spending it with us um, join with me as always are my wonderful co-hosts Dorian and Joe. Dorian, what's going on, my man? Yo, what's going on, dog? As I always say, every day is a holiday, and literally, it's about to be a, a little holiday here pretty soon. So I'm excited for that. Christmas tends to be one of my favorite, right around the corner from New Year's, where I'm probably going to turn up. I wish I be, could, could be turning up in Miami with the boys again, but you know what? It's still fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, we also have Joe. Joe, how you doing today, my man? Doing good, guys. Doing very good. Had a little technical difficulty, but we're still here, ready to bring the heat. Yeah, this is an absolutely scuffed show. If you guys are watching on YouTube, this is actually a recording, not a live stream like we normally do. We are having some streaming uh, issues with our streaming software. You can see in this little bottom right-hand corner, there's a full screen. That is because we are actually having to capture our window while we are recording this because uh, this software is just not wanting to work with us, even in record-only mode. So, we appreciate your patience, your support, as always, and spending time with us this holiday season. Hopefully on Thursday, we will be having our special holiday stream. We'll be going over some fun tidbits going into 2023 as well um, over the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're tuning in 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, whether it is on podcasts like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, YouTube channel, or on Twitter. We're also putting out YouTube shorts just to make sure you guys have sound bites of all the relevant information that we're covering over the episode. So without further ado, let's get into some numbers. Let's go over some stats. Uh, last time I checked over on TIEXO.com. So we are at 200K Solana volume. Um, going over Magic Eden, we're 150K. They're still pumping along. They still got plenty of market share between them and Coral Cube, which actually has 27K Solana volume over the past 24 hours, um, as well as Hade Swap. So Haiti Swap. Um, Doing 12.79k in Solana volume over the past 24 hours, and then of course, Exchange Art continues to rip 2.62k Solana volume, having themselves a week over there. 22k Solana volume. Um, thanks for moving right along. We're seeing a lot more AMM volume, which to me is a little bit concerning because it's so easy to swap in and out of, and I don't know if that gets counted into the volume stats. If it does, then this is absolutely a fake statistic. Uh, Magic Eden feels a little bit more safe as far as gauging volume goes, um, but even then, wash trading is prevalent. We still have optional creator royalties on most collections, although we are getting those new collections that have creator royalties in force. So, with all that said, take this number with a grain of salt. Um, still pumping them on, though. It doesn't feel like we're pumping, though. You know what I mean? Like, at a lot of these collections, even though we got the volume, which volume is usually our, our main metric that we go with, we don't feel like we have a ton of volume right now. Uh, a lot of projects aren't pumping. Um, kind of want to get your market sentiment. Let's go over to Dorian first, and then we'll head over to Joe. Yeah, man, um, I, I'm right there with you. Like, gone are the days that we used to be able to use volume as an indicator of how healthy the market is. After the zero royalties thing came along and our optional royalties came along, is like volume became like a kind of vain indicator, uh, especially right now. It's like when we're seeing high volume, but net prices pumping, we can usually attribute that to wash trading by actual activity within the ecosystem. There's just a different feel that happens when there's high volume and then projects are pumping. Like just because you have 200K volume right now, nothing's going on. Literally nothing's pumping. That just shows that a lot of liquidity is just being rotated. However, even if we're at a lower volume, like 120K, per se, but it's like we had Clanosaurs a couple weeks ago that pumped. It's like that's when actual life is in the ecosystem. So I think it's now it's a bit difficult for those individuals who can't be involved in uh, NFTs on a daily basis to really know like, hey, are the things going on or not? So yeah, that's kind of like how I'm feeling in the market right now. It's like not much is going on, even though with high volume, we're just kind of chilling. And I'm sure later on in the show, we can talk about what we're getting into uh, our upcoming plays we're looking at. Absolutely. Um, I'm right there with you. It just feels a little bit uh, synthetic almost in the volume. And, 
you know, when you see this kind of volume, you expect a lot of things to be pumping. Yeah. Uh, we do have a few pumps, and we'll go over those in a little bit. But, Joe, I want to take it over to you. How are we feeling about the market right now? Yeah, we're just playing in the sandbox at this point. You know, holiday season's coming up, and people are going to be out and about. And those unique wallets we see trading on a daily basis will probably drop 20 to 30%. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not some good entries to be had on some solid projects here. Uh, if you had a long-term horizon like we do, you know, like I'm looking possibly for another U or D God on this pullback here, or, you know, looking at entries back into, you know, Nectars for Elixir. Some of these bigger out overpriced things I, I'm looking for entries on, kind of like an equal market value coming back down to that fair market value that I'm looking for. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy about the market. We're not tanking. No one's selling off anything. I think everyone that wanted to sell has sold, and it's more of an accumulation, but we can't really do anything about the macro. Um, environment when looking at just crypto and regulation and the whole FTX trial still ongoing and stuff like that. So you can never take that out of, uh, you know, out of um, uh, context there. But within our echo chamber, Twitter um, and Solana, I think we're good to go right now. Yeah, um, it, it still feels good. Like we're still we're still moving along and whatnot, but it just feels slower. Like if you see 200K volume, you expect things to be going. So um, just keep an eye on it. I, I, I'm not really interested in buying much right now. Um, and that's also a byproduct of me being kind of unplugged for the holidays as much as I normally am. I'm still keeping a finger on the pulse, but not nearly as much as I normally do. So it is something that we need to continue monitoring, right? We need to make sure that we're staying on top of everything. And, um, you know, if you look at this time last year, this is tends to be when we have the lowest amount of buyers. So, um, if you are getting discouraged, that's okay. If you're trying to sell stuff and it's not selling, that's okay. This is actually usually the time that we start seeing drawdowns, and this is a good time to start prepping your portfolio for 2023. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I'm waiting for things to go a little bit lower, even with this high volume that we're seeing, and we'll just kind of go from there. Um, but speaking of our year in review, Soul Sniper. So we'll go with Soul Sniper first. They do have a nice wrapped sort of thing. So if you guys use Spotify, um, you have a Spotify wrapped where it goes over your year in review, talks about your most played songs and your most played albums and your genres and your types of listeners and all that good stuff. If you're running a podcast, it's really fun. It's a really fun and engaging way to, uh, further the platform. And soul sniper did a similar thing with Solana NFTs. So though you can actually input your wallet address and they'll tell you what your best trades were and your worst trades were and where you spent the most volume and all that good stuff. Um, kind of depressing to see since Solana is $12, uh, but nonetheless, they do it all in sole terms. So it is still fun to see. I had a little bit of issues on my end. I think it's some bugs when it comes to like my Ute sales were mainly into pools. So I was making sure like if I saw, um, a little bit of weakness, I was selling into those collection offers on magic Eden and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's where a lot of these bugs come in because I, I I promise you my most profitable trade was more than 15 soul, which it was saying um, Lily was my most profitable trade, which um, I, I did cook on Lily, but I, I had much more profitable trades on different collections. It's still registering my volume, so I'm sure they'll work out some kinks, but still, nonetheless, it's a really fun and engaging way to um, keep your way up in this bear market. So. Joe, I want to kick it over to you. Did you do wrapped? And what is your most profitable tr profitable trade on there? Yeah, I definitely did wrapped. Um, I think my most profitable trades were uh, stoned apes that I bought back when Solana was like above 100. I don't even know, closer to 150, I think. I think I bought under five soul and I sold all of them between 70 and 120 soul. So yeah, I bought it. Yeah, six, bought them five to six to seven soul, and that unloaded all of those right around seventy to one hundred and twenty. And I captured the puff and all uh, opportunity costs uh, before that whole liquidity uh, kind of problem happened with their tokenomics. So I was actually that's what propelled me into the space. I got in around November eighteenth, twenty twenty one, and that was like my first big hit. Before that, I was buying rugs. Buy, you know, I had no idea what anything even was. I was just and there was no discord really or twitter groups yeah it was very wild wild west like um and so yeah that, that was my first big uh trade on solana shout out to stone dates yeah yeah that's it's strange because joe that seems like a long time to hold uh for you like you're usually pretty in and out of place um so that's a huge multiple 
congrats on that by the way that is a huge first hit congrats man yeah, yeah that, that's you, that's large but um congrats on that uh door want to kick it over to you what's your most profitable trade on wrapped yeah man my most profitable trade on wrapped is uh catalina wells dog uh that was one of the ones i absolutely cooked on i purchased it at 15 soul i forgot the exact price of soul but i sold it at 149.69 dog Dang. so uh 134 sold profit. That was one of my most profitable trades like ever. Um, I just knew Wells were bullish. That was lead up to the bubble goose too. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is definitely the time to exit right now. <laughs> um, I all... go ahead. I was just saying that's so smart, dude. Like I I, <laughs> I wish I had exited. I somebody offered me like 200 soul for my whale, and I was like, I'm not selling. And uh, <laughs> I don't. I and that was just like the last straw where I was like, you know what? Um, yep. I'm a profit maxi through and through. Mm -hmm. I need to stop being so attached to JPEGs yep. and, um, and, and now here we are. I'm, I'm much more yep. profitable. So if you're watching this and yep. listening to it, it's okay to take profit. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. there's some communities I like always want to be a part of like remnants. Um, you know, I'm on the team and then of course, cyber samurai, which we always chill in here. Mm -hmm. I'll always hold at least mm -hmm. half of my Sam's or something like that. I will always hold, um, cyber samurai. It, it's just, yep. it makes sense for me, but um continue door that's an awesome yeah. trade dude thanks man no i i i agree with you it's like i've turned into a profit maxi as well uh it's every everything but cyber samurai and even then i've taken a lot of profits on cyber samurai so like i kind of just ride out everything i have now which is like a ton of cyber samurai it's insane actually uh but no like even with my smb i just picked up let soul reach 200 dollars again and SMB still around 250, your boy's selling. I'm not missing out on 60K. I'll buy back in later. <laughs> um, but my next profitable trade was surprisingly four by four. Go figure, right? I purchased it for 80, 18 or 18.88 sold, sold it for 89.69. So 70 sold profit. But yeah, I mean, it, years are looking pretty good. And even though it's like I, I in total, I came up as what uh, Soul Sniper captured. I came up 418 sold this year, according to things that I just purchased and sold from secondary. But there's a lot of other plays that I cooked on, like Utes. I had two Ute lists. So I sold both my tubes or whatever. It was hugely profitable on those. Scrap trades, dust trades that weren't captured. Um, but a year is not like all these wins. People only like to talk about them. But I took massive L's, man. I lost like 200 soul in trades because like the way I trade is like I pick my positions and I go heavy into them. Like I'm talking about real heavy. <laughs> it's, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Can't hear you, dog. Yeah, it happens. I mean, like you get trapped in some positions and uh, it's not exactly fun, um, no. but you decide you want to run with it. And if you don't set your stop loss, like it's, it is hard to get yourself out of those mm -hmm. underwater positions. Mm -hmm. So definitely feel you on that. I, I will never forgive Hydra launch pad for, for all of the, the, I mean, between Akari and reptilian renegade, which were my two yeah, biggest no. losses. Um, I think I lost like 70 soul between the two. Oof. Um, yeah, those, those were my biggest losses. Mm -hmm. Um, if I sold my whale right now, that'd probably be at a, a 60 soul loss. So yeah, I guess, I guess there is, there is some, um, I did buy whales at, you know, uh, I bought one at 88 leaning up to bubble goose. So, um, still hold on to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's tough, but hey, other than that, hey, dude, I brought 12 bubble goose at like a hundred dollars when the, uh, floor was like nine. So yeah, don't worry. We're all down bad. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah. it is, it's, it's just a byproduct of making sure that you're setting your stop losses and all that good stuff. And wrapped is a good way of kind of looking at your year in review. If you don't keep a copy of your trades and stuff, it does let you remember like what happened on this trade. Why did I do so bad? And just thinking of like, how can I make this better in 2023? Mm -hmm. So would encourage everybody to go check it out. Soul Sniper is definitely one of our favorite platforms that we use, not only just for that, but um, it's been my favorite live trading platform so far with the terminal, with um, the price charts. You can actually chart some of the tokens um, just in lines, I know they're working on candles right now on like camp. So I want to see what remnants camp looks like. Um, they have to pull in famous Fox, uh, data. So working on that right now, they continue to get better and, um, you know, I definitely appreciate them, but, uh, yeah, going forward, we do have another hype mint that happened today. We have nittables. So if you guys are, um, 
just catching into the the soul scene we just had clanosaurs which is in a very similar vein um clay dinosaurs animated one of the first things that we've seen of that nature on solana and right behind them comes nittables now usually we see this gen 2 not do nearly as well as the first one um i don't even want to call it gen 2 it happens so soon after after one and after the other but um yeah we're still seeing Things are minting out, so it looks like Nittables will mint out. It was a seven soul mint for whitelist. Um, not sure if it'll go to public or anything like that, but it looks cool to me. It looks like Tim Burton um, animation style yarn, three D models that look really clean to me. Um, it is very unique in my opinion. Uh, outside of that, it just looks like a generative art play. I don't know what else is going on for it. I haven't heard much buzz about it because everybody was so focused on Clanosaurs. So. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Joe, I want to kick it over to you first. How do you think this will perform? Do you like Nittables? Do you not like Nittables? What are we doing here? Yeah, I totally don't even, not even on my uh, on my horizon, not even in my, not even that I don't care about it. It's just, they might be a good team. I just, you know, only so much liquidity, only so much mental space. So I, that's one I just totally didn't even give one thought into. So honestly, I'm looking Looking forward to hearing what you guys think. Cause I'm really, I have no idea about them at all. I know they have a very similar structure to Clayno visually wise, obviously, like the whole um, generative 3D graphic kind of walking in motion. But um, other than that, I have no idea. Is it just an art play, or do they have a roadmap? I think so. Do they have a utility base, or is it just like here's some art and that's all we're giving you right now? So we don't don't really have anything to go against. Like you can't say, hey, we promised you this. They're just like, hey, here's art for now. Yeah, I think I think it's just an art play, dude. And I mean, I'm I'm about it, but we've been talking so much about one of one art that I'm just more bullish on that versus these generative plays. I I just think if you go from like a bottom up approach where you're basically making ten thousand of these art plays or art NFTs, generatively speaking, versus a top down approach where you're you're starting a collection, it's thematic, it's easier to build one of one. Uh, lore to me like you can focus on 25 characters versus 10,000 or just like shooting you know throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks right and I feel like that's kind of what these generative plays are um Clanosaurus is a little bit different to me because you get airdrops there is some utility I don't know about nittables I honestly don't so it's something that recently came on my radar I thought it was just like another one we saw it so much back in like April where okay bears did really well so then we saw like okay bulls we saw great goats. We saw um, OK Panthers or whatever, the, the Midnight Panthers, whatever happened there. We just saw a lot of derivatives almost. And while this is completely different, like it is, um, you know, knitted dolls almost that are walking towards you and they look cool and they're different style. Um, it's very much in the same vein. And they came out after, like right after Clanosaurus. So it just feels like this is a liquidity starved. Um, environment right now and not a lot is moving even though we have 200 soul uh, i just don't know how it'll play out i i honestly don't so if i if i see a play i'll i'll make it but right now i'm interested in farm many like way more projects at seven soul than nittables that's just me personally dorian what do you think about them yeah uh while you two were talking i was briefly looking over the team's page discord real quick just to get an idea about them um, the team seems pretty capable. A lot of them went to Harvard. They have some advisors that are experienced in the space. So this is not really knocking the team in of itself uh, or what they're trying to do with their project. And I'm not saying they're not going to be successful, but I just, what Joe brought up, it's the opportunity cost. It's like, how much of a risk is it to, what's the mint, like seven, eight soul right now? And it's like, okay, it's like, what, you buy one, but you never should buy one if you're trying to flip, especially if you don't have whitelist, and you should be having enough conviction to buy several of them. So I'm not about to spend 21 plus soul getting into a project right now that may not do that well in the short term. Um, there's other things coming up, such as we have pilots coming up, we have, which means scrap is a good play. Dust is kind of seeming undervalued right now. So you could get into that. You could get in for me personally, save that liquidity to pick up a supply chain voxel because I think Adam is going to completely cook over there with Ironfall gang. So there's many other things that I think that liquidity can be used for in the short term, vice jumping into a new mint with uh, 
such, I, I guess, vague, uh, kind of faded volume right now, that, like volume that I really can't trust. So I don't really think these are going to pump hard. Not saying they won't do in the long term, but like in the short to medium term, I think there are better plays out there. Yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement where it just feels like all this is going to do is kind of kneecap Klanosaurs mm-hmm. until Klanosaurs drops mm-hmm. another airdrop or um, starts mm-hmm. with their game theory because there will be. There's supposed to be rating and classes and um, different game mechanics that are going to be happening over at Klanosaurs. So until they drop that, really all this is going to do is hampen, uh, hamper the velocity of what we're going to see with Klanosaurs. So that's really all I view it as. I wish it, um, it came out maybe a little bit more spaced out or something like that, or we had more information because it didn't feel very marketed to me, um, and, which is crazy because they, they have almost 20K followers on Twitter. Um, a lot of people that are plugged into the space knew about them. Uh, I had, I was aware of them, but I, I wasn't really on my radar. I didn't think they'd do anything. So, um, not knocking nitipals, prove me wrong. I'd love to see it. Um, but I just don't know enough. And and I think there's better plays out there for seven soul. Yeah. 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 And uh, like people can remain bullish all day on them. Like if people are jumping like, Oh, you guys just didn't do enough research, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? You're probably right. But in the end of the day, all most mints follow the same path. It's like they'll pump a little bit and pull back. So I just don't think it's risk, risk, uh, worth the risk to invest seven, eight soul, even for a 2x pump when there are other things out there. Like it's just not worth the, uh, um, the risk reward is just not there for me. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm going over in my head, like what the bull case is for it. And I, I just don't know for me personally, I would rather buy a uh, UGS or underground society, yeah. which has been yep. absolutely uh, on a tear lately. I'm, I'm upset. I didn't buy more. I did buy one more, um, under mint when I saw it there just cause I wanted to, it's on a separate wallet. So, um, you know, I have two now. I wish I had more. Dude, they're at 8.25 right now, um, up from three soul mint. They went down below mint, and then we're looking at, you know, this is going to be the next big collection, it feels like. I, I, I don't know. I just, yeah. you 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 know Light and Jake and uh, Searcher are just going to absolutely cook over there. They got mm-hmm. staking mm-hmm. live. Once Core comes out, which we talked about on last episode, mortgaging NFTs, and we can start seeing velocity in some of these uh, blue chips. To me, that's the bullish bullish case right there. I think that is a ton of utility. I, I like the art. Um, not necessarily like something I'm over the moon about, but at least it's unique and it just delivers a lot of utility. That's what I want to see out of a generative collection, honestly, is um, utility or strong, strong, strong community um, like we see yeah. with um, uh, SMB or D gods or something. I know that comes as a function of floor price as well, or uh, historical value and everything like that. So there's a lot of different factors, but it's hard to build that right now. And mm-hmm. and I think utility in a bear market is probably the best way to go about mm-hmm. building a community. So we'll see, yeah. we'll see what happens with it. I just think there's so many other plays out there for seven soul ish. Um, we saw a nice run with net runners, Joe, where, I mean, tax season was coming. That was so obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that hindsight looking at it, like, why didn't I buy like 20 of these things and just wait because you knew they were going to pump, um, everybody needs to do taxes. If this makes your life that much easier, like this is the most obvious bullish catalyst that you could possibly find. So great call on that. I appreciate that. And cyber syndicate, um, which you also mentioned on last episode, right before they pump. So, um, got my bag at like 0.3, 0.4 and, um, yeah, I appreciate it. Joe, I want to kick it over to you. Let's talk about some alpha because I, I think right now that's what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking for a nice little Christmas present, some undervalued stuff. Um, what are you looking at right now? Yeah, so I think it's a time like whenever you you, you have catalysts for SPL tokens, I like to play those way more liquid. Um, you're, you can get in and out a lot easier. So my idea is to play the scrap, which I've already been playing. I've entered 25 cents, entered 30 cents, entered 32 cents, entered 37 cents. Um, so I'm in that and dust, I'm looking for this play back down to like 36, 35 ish, because there's just a lot of utility for dust coming up in the season three and for reward. I, I just see catalysts on the horizon here and we bottom out, man. Like even if we go down, you know, another 20%, I, I just don't see these SPL tokens going too much lower, especially with graphite 
for, for scrap. And then for dust, you know, it's gas already, and it's going to be a lot more for these new collections. And, and with SPLs, it's just a safer bet for me. I come from trading crypto leverage. I, I like setting take profits and, and stop losses, and I'm able to get in and out a lot quicker. With me, and I'll be honest with you guys, when I list an NFT and it doesn't sell right away, I will undercut you, right? I need out. I need out. Just like when I want to sell, I need out. That's just my trader mindset. I will take the small 0.3 loss to get out instantly. So I just like the SPL plays when there's catalysts on the horizon, when you can see, okay, there's some volume that's going to be put in here because people love to wait. Like right now, I just see that Tom put out the 29th as a tentative date and you already see daily volume pumping up right now on Hello Moon if you check out Scrap. And it's just like, it's just an easy play. And guess what? It'll die down. Christmas will come, people will forget. Then the announcement will come out like the 27th or 28th and people will come back in on hard on, on Scrap. So I'm playing more of the swing on Scrap right now, but you could definitely scalp it as well. But So yeah, my, my answer to you, long-winded, sorry, Bison, would be SPLs. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that. I mean, uh, Scrap and Dust seem like a very easy one to trade right now. There's a lot of volatility and it is more liquid. As we always say on the show, liquidity is king. And if you can get in and out of these plays easier especially in this like low buyer environment, then this is where I would be trading is, is SPLs. Now, the only thing I worry about with dust um, is I, I think we'll see a Christmas pump because that's when rewards are supposed to come out. And I guarantee you there's going to be dust utility involved there where they're wanting to reclaim. Unfortunately, it's going to be a keynote experience like Apple gives because they found that they basically found a better brand or something to go for rewards so for you're not getting access to the rewards, you're getting access to a big keynote that'll explain the full roadmap, full rewards, full branding with the new brands that are locked in. Every so it's literally going to be an experience like Apple would put on um, on Christmas. Sorry, but you know, they just put that out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So do you think any of the rewards are going to be dust um, driven? Like they're going to need dust in order to claim them or anything like that? Yes. For sure. Claimable, definitely. Uh, the claiming, absolutely. It'll be a gas fee for a couple of dust, I bet. Um, but for the incentive wise, I think the incentive will be for D, uh, D God season three, all the incentives for dust will be laid out. And I think that will allow people a timeline to set up their investor's theses on dust again. But just from a social sentiment, I've had three or four D God whales in my DMs asking yo what's the price action on dust looking whenever i get that sentiment starting to turn i'm like okay bigger money's starting to think about it again so i do think you have to be careful bison i think it could go a lot lower first but i think maybe if you could time it right before that rollout then you're looking at an advantageous uh point right there yeah that's i mean that's a really good point joe is once we get more information that's when buying starts happening um, or at least plan buying. So just knowing your catalyst, going into stuff like that makes sense. Scrap's easy, right? I mean, pilots are minting. You need scrap for it. That's I mean, It's pretty straightforward, right? And the dust is a little bit more complicated because we got to see the rewards. Is it worth the dust? All that good stuff. So I would imagine, Bison, you... yeah, what's up? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you say scrap is easy, dog, but we saw what happened with dust during use, man. It's like the most obvious play. People don't have patience longer than a fish, and they're just like, oh, man, I got to buy in last second. And so it's like, yeah, it seems easy to us, but for a lot of people, it's just like, oh, man, I didn't see this coming, even though I don't know how. It was, like, obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I should say it's it's obvious in hindsight. Um, for us, it's obvious in foresight, right? And it's just it's just making sure you you plan out what is coming up on the horizon. Scraps very obvious. You're gonna need it. Um, people as they continue to get pilot listed are going to need to buy scrap. So the more pilot lists we get, the more scrap they'll need. If they get oil, then they don't need scrap. It gets the airdrop to them. So um, just keep that in mind. Also, P people will need scrap. Yeah, also, uh, there's not a, um, to my knowledge, I did sell my pilot, uh, sorry, my Tayo because I rotated into uh, SMB, but the last unlock period was for 60 days was a couple weeks ago. So if you relocked, it's a high likelihood that the pilots will mint before the next 30 day unlock or 60 day unlock. So there shouldn't be a dumpage of scrap coming up. It's good to know. There you go. So yeah, we do like planning around these unlock periods when it comes to dust or uh, scrap because Tios are notorious for as soon as they get the scrap on the unlock, they will go ahead and market dump it. 
especially in this market. I don't blame them. That's free money. So yeah, just get making, they're making sure they keep liquidity on hand. So that being said, SPL plays definitely agree. Talked about UGS. They're continuing to pump. I do think they'll just continue to run for a little bit. Um, I see them going into double digits pretty easily. And then from there, kind of just taking a little bit of a pullback. I do think um, now that we've had this uh, holiday mint from Liberty Square, which was a free mint, we'll probably see some pullback on Liberty Square. I, I'm big bullish on them. I think that community is just – it's really hard to replicate what they've done. They've been very forward-facing. Um like I said, in this in this bear market, they've continued to build. So I'm I'm still bullish on them. I still think squirrels are definitely the play. But if you want something on a lower cost, um, these hollowed or even these uh, holiday drops that they did may be an interesting play. As far as anything else goes, Lily and Lotus Gang continue to hold their floor. Um, I'm bullish on them. I do think I'm once planning hits. I think Lily just absolutely goes on a tear. And we start seeing listings drop from there. Anything that has staking means that you're getting supply off the market. Like a lot of people are going to be more midterm holders at the very least compared to stuff that doesn't have staking. So staking is a really nice mechanism, especially in a bear market, because it just forces people into the mindset of, hey, I'm at least getting rewards in some way, shape or form from holding on to this NFT. And so anything that does that right now, planting UGS release their staking Anything of that nature for me is a bullish catalyst. I want to hold on to those. So if I see any sort of staking announcements, I'm going for that project most likely. Um, another play that I think eventually will play out is ovals. Now I did, I bought the top on ovals um, after literally calling the price action. I then bought the top. So I'm notorious for not taking my own words. I hope you guys listened to me when I said they're going to go below mint and then rock it up from there. 17. I bought at 17 too. Like yeah. Two at, two at 17. We're good, baby. We're good. Well, here's here's the problem with ovals and really AMMs in general because it happened with Clanosaurus and it happened with ovals, um, which is Elixir's profile picture. It's going to have utility and everything like that if you guys aren't familiar with the project. I bought because I saw on Hyperspace there was only 300 listed. And I was like, dude, that is a supply squeeze. There's 10K of these things and there's only 300 listed. As soon as I bought, literally like an hour later, a huge wall appeared because an AMM pool popped up. And I'm guessing it's Elixirs, what they withheld in supply, because it was yeah. like 450 of them. They popped yeah. up literally at like 18.7 or something like that, and they continued to adjust down. All that's doing is putting sell pressure on. When people start seeing that stuff, it's putting sell pressure like, uh, there's no way we're breaking that wall. It's a 450 uh, NFT wall. There's like... 3,000 buyers right now. Actually, there's yeah. more than that, I but still. doing that on purpose sometimes, Bison, because I watched the same wallets reaccumulate, and then they did that for Lily's a lot, a lot too, Haiti Swap. Same wallets, big wallets on Haiti Swap that own three to 7,000 Solana worth of NFTs are building walls, then building buy, right? And then they're basically just getting that. They're first, they're getting their fees because everyone's starting to trade more, sell, whatever it is, buy, sell. Then they're, they're just grabbing at a lower cost and then resell and it's like that's cool if you incrementally raise your floor you could do that smart right math guys you, let's do some math and say oh percentage wise 0.01 percent i can raise the floor daily without anyone even noticing because i'm controlling that already so that's i think there's a lot healthier way you could go about it at, from some of these amm whales but I just at the end of the day capitalistic market they don't give a flying f you know they really don't so that that's a great point to look out for bison yeah, I mean, we I we saw it with ovals. We saw it with Clanosaurs as well. I mean, they did it too with Hades Swap or Haiti Swap. That um, it was another three hundred and thirty listed. I was I it was holding up well after the airdrop. I was like, dude, these numbers don't exist in a bear market. If that's the case, like I'm buying these. So I bought two of them. Um, I'm at three total now. I'm looking to exit because this this AMM pool keeps pushing them down, and all they do is they readjust. Really, when people get flashed that sell wall, all they do is they decide, okay, well, I'm going to undercut that. And they continue to undercut because people are scared to buy now because they see that wall and they're like, well, what's the point of buying if I'm capped on the upside? We're not going to break this 100 plus NFT wall anytime soon. And they just keep readjusting. And I think it's kind of nefarious. Like you said, I mean, it just 
for me, they're trying to get lower entries or they're trying to reaccumulate and just build up their AMM pool so then they can collect the fees on them. Um, but they're trapping themselves in the own uh, like illiquidity, uh, illiquid positions. Oh my goodness! Uh, and I, I don't know. It just feels like it's a net negative. Like stop doing that. Um, let the let the price action happen normally. I know Salami Mommy was talking about it um, on a few of his Twitter posts as well, where he's saying like AMM's kind of ruined a ton of velocity upwards. Like we're not seeing these collections. Just absolutely, we're not seeing another OK Bears ever since AMMs popped up. You know, it's not going from from one to two hundred. I know that's also a product of the market, but um, AMMs definitely did not help that. You know what I mean? Like they they haven't helped that. And I I think when you get these big pools that they can just turn on and turn off um, and flash these walls and like make people think they're going up and sell into that, and then they flash the pool again, and people are like, well, I'm not buying because. Why would I? I have to break through a, a hundred uh, plus NFT wall. Like it, it's tough. So I think AMMs um, pose a little bit of a problem. And with these like collections that have a ton of volume, that's where you're going to see these AMM pools start flashing or they go on and off. And um, it almost does feel like a little bit of price action manipulation. So um, yeah, that's why I've stopped buying lately is because with this low buyer environment with these AMM pools popping up, and and kind of ruining price action it just doesn't feel like i have as much of an edge as i normally do yeah well, well said man um you and joe definitely uh articulated that point very well i did want to hit on the point like about what we're buying in the sense of like ugs and ovals one of these the the things that these collections have in common is that they're really trying to push the boundaries of uh nfts and DeFi. and i think that uh the utility that i'm looking out for coming up in the future are more projects that are trying to integrate DeFi into NFTs in a unique manner. I think that's the utility that we're going to see a lot of success with. We saw Sharky, uh, Sharkify come out and they were a DeFi lending platform, but Fract has been a while for a while. Why is Sharkify doing more than them? Because their UI is better. Their ability to the ease of use of their platform is better. So I think one of the things that we should keep an eye out on or is for utility plays is NFT integrated DeFi that either improves existing things or really or really revolutionizes uh, DeFi for NFTs uh, in a way that we haven't seen before with a backed and known team, of course. Like if this team is just coming out of nowhere, it's just like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but even with Elixir, it's like, uh, Elixir was a great example of like launching things. If I'm not mistaken, they had several products launch before they even launched their NFT. Yeah, it's a really good point, Dora. And I know we talked about it on No Fluff today. Um, NFT Fi is definitely a real thing. And I, I've been saying for a while, I made a post about it yesterday that if we really want to heal Solana, our DeFi system needs yep. to go back Agreed. on. I've been banging this drum for a while. And as we continue to lose, um, as we continue to lose, our DeFi TVL, which is our um, total value locked, um, then we're going to, uh, we don't have enough buying pressure. We don't have enough locked liquidity into more of a mid or long-term approach. So if if we can't heal that, then maybe NFT Fi is really like at least a short-term Band-Aid um, to lock up more liquidity into a longer or sh um, medium-term hold and in order to get returns on it. And so I am incredibly um, bullish on NFT Fi. I think you're absolutely right. If it does improve existing infrastructure, if we do get new tools like Core with UGS, those are really the plays that I'm looking for right now. And uh, I, I think they'll continue to cook. I do. Mm -hmm. Agreed, man. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Um, guys, I think that's about it as far as what we want to cover definitely more bullish on our show on thursday we'll be talking about a few different um segments and keys and everything like that hopefully we'll have our technical difficulties sorted out between now and then and um, fingers crossed <laughs> yeah fingers crossed man i will we'll find out but until then um got any closing remarks anything we want to go over that we didn't cover no, nah, dog, I'm good. I appreciate everybody taking I wish we had a live audience today, but I appreciate everybody taking out the time to watch the VOD and, you know, supporting the channel. Absolutely. Well, um, seriously, thank you guys so much for sticking with us and listening on all of our platforms, whether it is YouTube, podcasts, uh, Apple, and Spotify. 
as well as watching the shorts. The shorts have been cooking lately. Um, we will continue to put out content as we see fit, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your holiday season to spend with us over at the Rare Fud team. Wishing you guys the very best, and we'll see you guys Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You won't want to miss it. Peace, everybody.